By the way, Willie, when we began this uh, 13 years ago, we initially did it at the Commonwealth Club offices on Market Street and soon we'll be on the Embarcadero. But today, here we are in the old press club building where the press club bar used to be, and, and here we are drinking water. And, <laughs> and if you remember, in the old press club, uh, they had a black cat, not me. They had a, uh, <laughs> they had a black cat. And anything you said behind that black cat could not be published. Do you remember right. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the only time I told the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's, start, let's start with a little bit of uh, uh, local politics. Uh, how, would you, uh, how would you grade, that is water for you, isn't it? Uh, okay. How would you grade, Ed Lee? It's the color that I drink. <laughs> okay. Vodka. Okay. <laughs> How would you grade Ed Lee so far? Well, Ed Lee is, uh, is uh, uh, what do they call it in college? A, B, C, D, E, uh, unfinished. What, what's, what's the one that's on? Incomplete. Incomplete. He's incomplete at the moment, and he's incomplete uh, because Ed Lee is such a, a, a decent, nice person. He, is, uh, he does not like to roll in and... Uh, uh, assassinate and eliminate uh, at some point he's gonna have to start doing that and when he does uh, he will be disliked by some of the persons uh, who run the various departments uh, because he'll have to hold them accountable uh, and since he can't run for re-election I hope he gets that spirit soon and he will complete his task as the mayor of the city he had the best ratings of any of us who served in that capacity. Last night, uh, I was advised by the people who do the snap polling, he's at 28% wow. in terms of acceptance. And that's really unfair, because Ed Lee is better than the 28%. And he's better, he's as good as most of us who ever held a job. Well, a few, there are a few people going around town now trying to raise money for the possibility of running for mayor. In the uh, in the future, and uh, what do you think uh, the chances are for uh, Mr. Peskin to get back into a leadership position? Aaron will, uh, I think, be a player uh, in San Francisco for the next uh, several years. Uh, he's just that smart. He's just that dedicated. He's got a lot of time on his hands. He has no children. Uh, he's got a working wife uh, and. Uh, he's smart in his own, and he's crafty, uh, and uh, loves politics, and understands land use almost as well as uh, uh, Karen uh, or some of the other people who are in the land use management business. And in that regard, uh, that's uh, that's ground central or uh, ground zero for San Francisco. That's where the politics are played. So Peskin is going to be around for a long time. The interesting thing, though, is that there would be no Peskin if Ed Lee had accepted Rose Pack's advice and appointed Cindy Wu. There would have been no Peskin. Can you imagine the town without Peskin? <laughs> <laughs> one more local issue question, and it's the perennial one. Is there anything that can be done about homelessness, or should we just accept the fact that it's going to be here with us forever? no matter how much money we spend. I think you have to accept the fact that homelessness is incurable by any single city. It is an issue that is far beyond the boundaries of any city. It may be even beyond the boundaries of any state. It's beyond the limits of whatever the authority is to manage the lives of people without their consent, or, and it therefore very difficult, and no matter how many resources you put out there, uh, if you can't uh, marshal those resources and have uh, the people you're trying to benefit uh, agree with and be directed by, or you're gonna have to just simply deal with it in the fashion it's currently being dealt with. Okay. Well, let's move to state politics for a little bit. It's a, it's a while until the next gubernatorial election, but, uh, the current governor, Jerry Brown, has he built any type of legacy yet? 
as a result of his service as governor this time around? Well, I think Jerry is uh, probably the number one uh, politician, the number one public policy figure. He has more influence on practically everything at the state level and the local level that's done in the state of California. His announcements and his decisions, and most of them are single. Uh, he has almost nobody that he consults with in the halls of the legislature to do whatever he wishes to do. He controls uh, the money, the budget, uh, uh, in every way. Uh, he controls the short-range performance and the long-range performance. Uh, I think that uh, when he leaves, he will have to share uh, the memory uh, and the recollection of the Browns as a clan, not just one single person, because you can't point to anything like you could with his father. His father, the system of higher education, uh, the highway system in the state of California. His father was almost single-handedly responsible for those two things. And then you think about the people who followed him, Reagan, uh, Duke Majin, and Bush, and uh, and Bush, <laughs> Reagan, Duke Majin, and Wilson, uh, so much like Bush. Uh, <laughs> uh, neither of them you can recall anything as significant as Jerry's father. And Jerry's sister was around for a while. You can't recall any significant thing that she did. So I think the Brown family will be remembered as a group, and Jerry will be remembered uh, probably having served more time uh, than any one of the other Browns. All right, he's had a significant imp uh, impact and control in many ways of the legislature. A, a few years ago, you said you were opposed uh, to, uh, to term limits. Is that still your position today? It's still my position. I think term limits in any uh, elective process is wrong. I think there are some people who should not have one term. Uh, <laughs> and I think there are other people who ought to have as many terms as they earn based on their performance. I can assure you that I'd still be Speaker of the California uh, State Assembly uh, without term limits. I never would have been the mayor of San Francisco. I'd still be up there uh, doing, uh, giving Jerry Brown a bad time uh, uh, in terms of the shared leadership for the state uh, because I was never ambitious enough to want to go some other place. I only came back to run for, for mayor uh, because uh, term limits at the, le at the state level uh, pushed me out and I only left the mayorship because of term limits. I'd still be mayor of San Francisco. <laughs> Uh, without term limits. There's no way you'd have Newsom uh, anywhere, uh, <laughs> uh, or Ed Lee, other than a staffer, uh, you, you, if, if, were I eligible continuously, because I never would have given up the job. I would have worked at making sure uh, that I uh, got myself elected, got myself uh, acceptable to 50 plus one of the voters. I was never interested in everybody. 